Yo, what is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Homie Hector here. And today we got this 2005 Kia Spectra 2.0 liter engine. And the customer calls me on this one because he wants to have the timing belt and water pump replaced. Now, the first thing I do is test drive it, make sure everything's good with it. And it runs pretty good. But one thing I did notice when I started the car up is this. The brake light and the battery light are on. Before I even get started on this timing belt water pump job, I want to see what's going on here with these lights. More than anything, the battery light. Because it would suck for the customer to spend a good amount of money on this timing belt water pump and then have to spend some more money on an alternator. Alright, and of course the best case scenario is do the timing belt water pump and take care of the charging system. But that's not always possible. Alright, so taking a look under the hood, you can see that the battery is new as the customer stated. Now the alternator doesn't look too new, but that does not mean it's bad. Okay, so let's check out the belt. Always make sure that the belt is installed, make sure that it's nice and tight. All right, so on the back of the alternator, you can see the plug right there, and right under it is the thick wire that comes direct from the battery. I'm gonna be using my Kaiweet ST600Y, because I like it. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna hook up to the battery and see what kind of voltage we got right now. Yeah, Bobby, yeah. All right, so we got 12.42 volts. Battery is a little bit low, that's because it hasn't been charging but it's still good voltage. Let me go ahead and start it up and see what we're reading. All right, we're at 12.02 volts. I'm just gonna let it run for a little bit and we're gonna keep an eye on it. Down to 12 volts, 11.99. All right, so it's just gonna keep dropping. All right, so the charging system isn't working. I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off. Let's go look at a wiring diagram, see how everything works, and then we can run some charging system tests. All right, so here's the charging system for this 2005 Kia Spectra. Of course, the battery gets grounded right there. Out of the battery, we have three wires coming out. One of the wires goes to the starter. The other wire goes to this fusible link, 120 amps for the alternator. And this other wire right here goes to the fuse box that lives under the hood. Now in this fuse box, we have the ECU1 fuse, 10 amps. And that has battery voltage at all times on this pink wire at the connector at the back of the alternator. On pin number two for the connector at the alternator, we have the lamp circuit. Now this wire right here gets battery voltage from this cluster fuse 10 amps with the key in the on or start position. This cluster fuse feeds battery voltage to the battery light on the instrument cluster and that battery voltage makes it all the way down to the alternator. If this alternator is not charging, then this black orange wire gets grounded and when it gets grounded, the battery light turns on on the instrument cluster to let you know that the car is not charging. So let's go back to the car, do some quick checks with the multimeter, and let's figure out what's going on with this charging system. What I'm going to do is remove the red lead from the battery. All right, so now I'm going to test at the back of the alternator to see what we have there. I'm just going to switch this over to one of these chingaderas right here. I'm going to go straight to the big wire on the back of the alternator. That's usually always my first step. Okay, I'm on the stud right now. All right, so it looks like we got no power on the thick wire. Okay, now I'm going to plug this connector at the back of the alternator. We should have battery voltage on both wires. One of them with the key on and one of them at all times. All right, so I'm going to go on the left wire first and we got 12.44. Now let me go on the right wire and we have nothing on this one because right now I don't have the key on. So let me turn the key on and we should have battery voltage. All right, so the key is on and we got battery voltage on the other wires. So now we should have power on both wires. This is the left wire, 12.28. And this is a wire on the right, 11.62. The wire that has 11.62 is our lamp circuit. So right now with this connector unplugged, our battery light should not be on on the dash. And the reason that light is off is because it's missing a ground. Here, so let me cycle the key on and off so you can see. So that battery light never comes on because it doesn't have a path to ground. All right, so what I'm going to do right now is use a test light and provide my own ground. And what that's going to tell me is that the circuit from the dash is good all the way out to the alternator. All right, so we got that battery voltage. I can pull it down with the test light. You can see the test light is lit very dimly. I'm going to go inside and show you that the light is on on the cluster now. Okay, and as you can see right there, the battery light came back because I'm giving it a ground through the test light. So that tells me that the circuit from the cluster to the alternator is good. So if you had a problem with the charge light, this will be one of the tests that you want to do. So now let's go back under the car and see why we don't have battery voltage on the thick wire of the alternator. Okay, so right now I'm on battery ground. I'm going to go to the alternator and touch the casing of the alternator. So this is a ground to ground voltage drop test. I'm on the casing of the alternator and we've got 7.4 millivolts. All right, so the ground side of the charging system checks okay. Now I'm gonna do these tests with the car off and then I'm gonna do them with the car running. All right, so now let's go to the positive side. And we got a reading of 9.19 volts. So we're dropping nine volts from the positive battery terminal 
out here to the back of the alternator. That's a huge voltage drop right there. All right, so now I'm gonna repeat these tests with the engine running. All right, so we're dropping nine volts on the positive side of the charging system. Okay, so now let's check the ground side. All right, so I'm back on the ground side. Now I'm gonna touch the other lead to the casing of the alternator. All right, touching the casing of the alternator and you can see we're dropping less than 100 millivolts. We're dropping about 30 to 45 millivolts. That's a good reading. So our problem is on the positive side of the charging system. Let's go find out where we're dropping our voltage. All right, so this is gonna be pretty simple. From here, we have three wires going out, one to the starter, one to the alternator, and one to the fuse box. We're gonna do the positive to the positive terminal. And with the black lead, we're gonna start tracing our voltage drop. All right, so I'm gonna start at the back of the alternator. Now right here, I'm on the actual stud, and I've got so right now I have a 12 volt drop from positive, from the positive terminal to the back of the alternator. So now let's go to the fuse of a link and see what we have there. On the bottom right, the 120 amp is for the alternator. All right, so remember there's three wires on the positive side. Okay, one of them goes down to the starter. The other one comes here to the fuse box. And the other one goes to the alternator through this 120 amp fusible link. Our voltage drop is on the wire that goes from the battery positive to the alternator through this fusible link. If I touch on this stud right here, we're dropping full battery voltage. If I touch on the screw that's on one side of the fusible link, we're not dropping anything. So check that out. Our voltage drop is somewhere in between this screw and this stud right here. We're dropping all the voltage here and we're not dropping any here. So this fuse is actually good. I thought we were gonna have a blown fuse because we had no power at the back of the alternator. But just to show you that this fuse is good, we can check continuity. All right, so I'm gonna remove this from the positive terminal. So I'm gonna switch it over to continuity. And when the circuit is complete, or we have continuity, you're gonna hear a beep. And you're gonna see this light on top of the multimeter. All right, so I'm gonna go across the fuse. I'm gonna put one on this side and one on this side. And it shows no continuity. Now I'm gonna move over to the stud, no continuity. This right here is beautiful, check this out. From this stud to this screw, no continuity. From this screw to this screw, no continuity. But if I touch the leg or the base of the fuse, we have continuity. So that means that from here to the base of the fuse on this side, we're good. This means that our problem is right here under this screw. If you notice right away, you can see a color difference. Whatever it is, it's definitely high resistance in this area and it's giving us charging system issues. Hopefully that's it and he doesn't need an alternator. Let me take off the fuse and see what's there. Ooh. This one doesn't look too bad. There's a little bit of something right here on the 120 amp fuse, but it looks like our problem is right there. Looks nice and corroded. I see some corrosion on here, but is it enough to give us only two, three volts down at the alternator? Maybe. All right, so what I'm gonna do right now is clean everything up, make sure that everything is nice and clean so that it makes a good contact, and we're gonna do our checks once again. It's always a good idea to disconnect the battery when you're working with electrical. Just saying. That looks way better. Check out the bottom side. Nice and clean, that's gonna make good contact. Now we can put this back. Nice. Now we can put everything back together. Check it out, nice and clean. <clears throat> you see what I was talking about, how they're almost two different colors? This one's more copper than this one. And I think this was caused by heat from the high resistance. So let's put everything back and check our charging system. Okay, nice and tight. Just how I like it. All right, so now I'm gonna start the car and see if we got the charging system back. Well, the charging system light went out on the dash. <laughs> That's crazy. 
Look, the voltage is rising. The battery light is out on the dash. All right, so let me turn on the headlights, high beams, floor motor, and let's see what happens to this voltage. All right, so I turn on the headlights, the high beams, the AC, put the blower on high, and you can see we're sitting right under 13 volts. That looks kind of weak to me, but we don't have a battery light on the dash. Seems to me like this alternator's on the way out. All right, so that right there looks like low charging voltage to me. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw this amp clamp around the wire that goes from the battery to the alternator. So I'm gonna set it on 60 amps, zero it out, and wrap it around this wire. So check it out, 12.3 volts, 53 amps of current, battery light is not on on the instrument cluster. What's going on here? That is hot. Could it be that we still have a voltage drop somewhere in the system? Let's check it out. I'm gonna go to the back of the alternator to see what kind of voltage we got. All right, I'm touching the stud on the back of the alternator and I'm reading about, and I'm reading right under 600 millivolts. On the stud, we're dropping about 70, 80, which is a good reading. If I move over to the next room, we're still under 100 millivolts. And on the other side, still under 100 millivolts. All right, so we still have a little bit of voltage drop on that positive wire. We're reading right above 13 volts. And you can see on the amp clamp that the alternator is dropping about 45 amps of current. And our battery light is not on. So I believe we still have a little bit of resistance in the wiring. So this wire right here that goes to the alternator has high resistance. That's where we're dropping our voltage. And not only that, this wire is actually getting pretty hot. Let me see if I can measure the temperature of this wire. All right, so with this thermometer, I'm gonna check the temperature of this stud and this stud, and we're gonna see if there's a difference. Okay, so we'll put red right here, black right there. We'll set this on temperature right there. All right, so right now it's reading 72 degrees Fahrenheit, 22 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna place this on the stud, and it's pretty steady at 90. Look at that. 115, 118, 120, 123, and it's still going. So you can clearly see the difference in temperature. This one barely makes it up to 90. It doesn't even go past 100. And if I move it over to this one, right away we're 130, 150, 211, 222, 271 degrees Fahrenheit. So our voltage drop is in this wire that goes from here to the alternator. Even though we don't have a battery light on, there's still a problem with the charging system voltage. I just went in there and Hector is gonna be running three Honda Civics with spoon engines. 